With all that out of the way, our build is now complete. Hope you're ready, because on this episode of I Use Arch By The Way, we're going to be building and customizing DWM. To get started, we're going to need a few dependencies. First is Git, a distributed version control system we'll be using to download DWM. To get this, type sudo pacman capital S git into your command line. Next is a text editor. This will be used to edit our DWM config and can be any of your choosing. I'll be using NeoVim. To install this, type sudo pacman capital S NeoVim. Third is a terminal of your choosing. I will be using Alacrity for its speed and customization ability. To install, type sudo pacman capital S Alacrity. Lastly is a dynamic menu that can be used to access our applications. Two popular choices are dmenu and rofi. I'll be using rofi. To install, type sudo pacman capital S rofi. With that complete, we're ready to get DWM set up. To start, we need to download DWM. This can be achieved by typing git clone in the link above in the terminal. Now if we type ls, which lists files in our directory, we can see a dwm folder. Type cd, then dwm in your command line to change directories into this folder. If we type ls now, we can see all the contents inside our dwm folder. Out of all the files, the only one we're concerned with is config.def.h. This is what we will edit to customize dwm. Now, if we type nvim for neovim, or whatever command is used to access your text editor, then config.def.h, we can make our first changes to DWM. To start, there are two changes I'll be making. The first one is mandatory, and that is changing the terminal editor to the one you've installed. The default terminal command is listed as term cmd. In neovim, we can search for this phrase by typing a forward slash than the phrase we are searching for. As you can see, term cmd is now highlighted. If we press enter, our focus will be applied to the highlighted term. Using the H key and L key to move left and right, we need to move our focus to where it says ST. Once there, type I to enter insert mode, then delete and replace ST with your terminal editor of choice. If you followed along from earlier, then this will be alacrity. Once done, hit escape to exit insert mode. The last step is optional, and it is replacing the mod key from alt to windows. The mod key is what is used by DWM to do just about everything, so make sure you choose a key you're comfortable with. By the way, you can always change this later to and from as needed. To find the mod key, we type slash to search, and then capital M, then OD. As you can see, the default is mod 1 mask, which is equivalent to the alt key. Hitting enter and moving with H and L keys, we can insert, delete, and replace 1 with 4. Or to make things easier, simply hover over the 1 and hit R. Then type 4 and the 1 will be replaced with 4. Now that we've completed that, type colon WQ to write and quit out of NeoVim. All that's left to do now is install DWM. To do this, we type sudo make install. Congrats, you've successfully edited a C source code file and built an application. To access this application, we need to add it to a special file called .xinitrc. You may or may not already have this. To check, first go back to your home directory by typing cd dot dot or cd atilda. Then type the command for your text editor in .xinitrc. This file is used to tell our display server what to do when it is started. All we need to tell our display server to do right now is run DWM. To do this, we type I to enter insert mode, then exec DWM. Once that is done, hit escape, then colon WQ to write and quit NeoVim. And that's it. To start our display server, simply type start X and DWM will be run. Before we get started adding commands and making DWM our own, it's important to understand the basic layout. On the top left, we have our tags. These are our workspaces in which we run programs in. We can move to different tags by pressing the mod key, aka the alt or windows key specified from earlier, and numbers 1 through 9 on our keyboard. Next to tags is our layout mode. As you can see, we are in the default tiling layout mode of master and stack, noted by its brackets and equal sign. In this mode, the master is the largest window and most recent window spawned by us. As we spawn new windows inside our tag or workspace, the newest window will automatically become the master and the old window will be pushed to the stack. To enter this mode from other layouts, we type mod plus T. Let's try spawning our terminal. Hit mod plus shift and enter. 
is we spawn new windows, you can see old windows are getting pushed to the stack. To change focus to a different window, we use mod key plus J or K. Notice the highlighted color of the focus windows moves as we change windows. Alternatively, we can move our mouse over a window to change focus. To swap windows around, hit mod plus enter. There are two other default layouts that come with DWM, which are floating and monocle. Floating allows us to have a window setup similar to that of a traditional desktop environment. To access this, type mod plus F. As you can see, our layout symbol has changed. To move our window around, hold the mod key, then click and drag the window. Lastly is monocle mode. This mode will take the current focus window and make it full screen. To enter this mode, we type mod plus M. Once again, using mod plus J or K, we can cycle the focus here to new windows. Let's change back to default tiling mode with mod plus T. Finally, to close a window, type mod plus shift and C. This will close the current focus window. By the way, all commands and keybinds discussed in this video will be left in the description below. With that said, it's time to start adding practical functionality to DWM. To get started, CV back into the DWM folder. Notice when we list directory contents that a new file called config.h appears. This is created every time we run sudo make install. Because we are going to be adding patches and patches make changes to our config.def.h file, not config.h, it's important to delete config.h before running sudo make install again. Otherwise, our changes will not take effect. Once that is done, we can begin making changes to our config.def.h file. The first thing to discuss here is keybinds. We're going to be creating custom keybinds to suit our personalized needs. To start, I'm going to type slash to search in capital XK. As you can see, there is a list titled keys, all with keybinds used by DWM. If you ever get confused or forget which keybinds do what, this should be the first place to look. Now, let's break this down. The first part of this line specifies the keybind. As you can see, all lines start with mod key, meaning to use these functions, we're going to be using our mod key of alt or windows. Next, notice that some of these have pipe and shift mask after mod key. This means in addition to hitting the mod key, we need to also be holding the shift key. After that, we have XK underscore and a key name. Without getting into the technicals, all that's needed to know is that to change our keybind from one to another, we replace the key after the underscore with our desired key. Besides the keys, we can see a function. These functions each do different things. The one we're going to use 90% of the time is spawn function. This allows us to start a program with a custom keybind. Let's try this out now. To start, let's create a function for our application menu, Rofi. If you look above keys, there's a section called commands. Notice that one of those commands are what we modified and added our terminal to. All these share the same structure. The only difference is the variable name and the arguments listed. For organization, I'm going to create a custom commands comment to separate our commands from the default ones. Using J and K to navigate up and down, let's move underneath our custom commands comment. Now, let's create a new command with a variable name of Rofi. Inside, add the following. This is the terminal command to spawn Rofi. Each argument separated by a comma represents a space in the terminal. To demonstrate this, if we open a terminal and type what we just entered, the following will be displayed. Rofi is a powerful tool with many different arguments that can be passed. For more info, I will leave a link in the description to the man pages below. Now that that's done, all we have to do is create a custom keybind for our command. Because DWM already has a keybind for a similar application, dmenu, I will simply replace the dmenu command with our new Rofi command. And just like that, we've created a personalized command in DWM. To make sure we're on the same page, I'll quickly create one more custom command. I will start by copying the basic format of above commands and create a custom variable name. In the terminal, my program editor of choice is spawned by typing code. So for arguments, I will simply type code. Once this is done, we can go back down to the keys section and create a custom key bind. To ensure we don't mistype anything, let's copy an already created item with a spawn function. In NeoVim, this is done by typing YY. Then, to paste, we press P. If you wanted to use shift as part of your keybind, you would add a pipe, then shift mask, like the commands below. 
Next, I will move over to the XK underscore and replace the letter P with O. Next, I'm going to change the argument from the one copied to the one desired. In my case, code. Finally, I'm going to search XK underscore O to ensure there isn't already a keybind with this command. As we can see, noted by the one of one, there isn't. Once you've added some commands, save and exit NeoVim with colon WQ. All that's left to do now is sudo make install. Now to see the changes take effect, we must quit and restart DWM. To do this, hit mod plus shift and Q. Then type start X and DWM will be restarted. Testing our commands now, if we hit mod plus P, Rofi appears. And if we hit mod plus O, code appears. Now that we know how to create custom commands and keybinds, it's time to learn what makes DWM truly special. Patches. In case you're wondering, patches are custom modifications created to enhance your DWM build. To view these patches, we need to head to the dwm.sucklist.org. Once there, click on the tab titled Patches. If we scroll down, it becomes clear there are tons of modifications we can make to our build special to us while not having the bloat of unused patches. Because one of the most popular functions across all tiling window managers is the ability to have gaps, let's add gaps to our build. There are several patches with different gap specifications. The one I will be using is full gaps because in addition to adding gaps in between windows, it adds gaps from the edge of the screen as well. To get this, we locate and click on the patch titled full gaps. As you can see, there is a description and several file links. To figure out which one we should get, let's view both of them. On clicking, you will see the source code for the entire patch. This is great for transparency and knowing exactly what we are getting. You also notice this patch has a date of 2020. Because the 6.2 patch does not have a date, I'm going to assume the other version is newer. With that said, let's begin patching. To start, CD into the DWM folder. Make sure to delete the config.h file before running sudo make install again. Next, let's make a folder inside called patches. This can be done by typing mkdir in our terminal. Great, now let's CD inside our newly created folder. To streamline gathering patches, we're going to need a module called wget, a tool used for retrieving content from web servers. To install, type pacman s wget. Now, if we copy the link to the patch, we can download directly into our patches folder. To do this, type wget, then hit Ctrl plus Shift plus V to paste our link into the terminal. Now if we type ls, we can see the file was downloaded to our patches folder. To apply this patch, we must go back to our DWM directory. To do this, from the patches folder, type cd dot dot. Now we type patch dash dash dry run, the left arrow, and the relative path to our full gaps file. By the way, we can hit tab to autocomplete. To break this down simply, we're calling the patch command and specifying the location of the patch. The dry run argument is used to test that this patch will work before we try to install. So if there are any errors, we will be able to troubleshoot beforehand. As you can see, there were no errors, so this patch is good to go. To install, we retype the previous command or hit the up arrow key to display the previous command. Now, simply remove the dry run argument and our DWM build will be patched with gaps. Congrats, you have successfully patched DWM. Now, if we go back into our config.def.h file, we can see a new parameter added called gap. This specifies how many pixels of gap space you want between your windows. While we're here, I'd like to point out the border variable specifies how many pixels the border around our window is. Feel free to change this as well. With that done, we move on to our last segment where we add custom modules to our status bar. To get started, we're going to search for a program called DWM Blocks. This third-party module makes customizing our status bar extremely easy and flexible. To download, let's first cd into our .config directory. In general, this is where we want to keep our custom program configs. Once there, we copy the GitHub link and in our terminal, type git clone in the link to the repo. Now, 
Let's cd into the clone repo by typing cd dwm blocks. If we look at the directory contents, we can see that there is a blocks.def.h file. Similar to dwm, this is the only file we're concerned with. Inside, we have two list items given by default. The first item in each list is an identifier for our function. This can be an emoji or plain text as you see here. The second item is a command line argument. Similar to how we added a command for Rofi, we can add commands here that return text output to display to our screen. The third item is the update time. As you can see, the first list item will update every 30 seconds, while the second one will update every 5 seconds. The last item is update signal, which is beyond the scope of this video. But know that this does not need to be changed unless you have a specific command that requires it. Below our list items, we have the delimiter. This is the text that will be between each function. To add more functions, we can simply add a new list item with the same parameter format as above and add whatever command we want. I won't be going into custom commands for DWM blocks in this video, but if you want to copy a setup like mine, all my config files for DWM, DWM blocks, and more are on my GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below. With that said, when done, write and quit out of the file and sudo make install. Note that this produces a blocks.h file that will need to be deleted before running sudo make install again, same as dwm. Once that is done, the last step is to add dwm blocks to our .xinitrc file. Two things to note here are one, dwm blocks is added before dwm. dwm should always be the last thing executed in your .xinitrc file. Secondly, note the and symbol. When adding multiple commands to our file, it's important to add the AND symbol at the end of each command. Once that's done, write and quit. Now, quit DWM with mod shift Q and type start X again. On start, our status bar will be updated. If you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back because we covered a lot of information in this video. From editing C source code to modding with patches, using NeoVim shortcuts, and literally building a window manager from the ground up. However, there's still a lot to be done. Wallpapers, setting up a compositor, syntax highlighting, terminal bling to let your neighbors know you're better than them, and much, much more. So for all that, stay tuned, because next Sunday, we're Rising DWM. This is Trevor Satori, signing off.